The science of climate change is now undisputed. Higher concentrations of so-called greenhouse gases resulting from human activity are present in the Earth's atmosphere than at any point in modern ecological history. The last time this happened was 15 million years ago at a point called the Ecocene. The planet is becoming steadily warmer as a result. According to the latest report of the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, compiled by thousands of scientists from around the world, if no action is taken to reduce emissions, the following could happen. Hundreds of millions of people will be exposed to increased water stress. 30% of all species on Earth will face extinction. Food scarcity will become an increasing problem in vulnerable regions and global GDP would drop by 5 to 20%. The figures in the last example are taken from the Stern Review. Sea levels have already begun to rise at a modest rate. The estimated rise at 0.5 to 0.8 meters by the end of the century. This is based on the idea that melting of ice caps will continue in a steady fashion. However, NASA argues that ice sheet disintegration will not occur in a gradual or steady fashion. The Greenland ice sheet is already becoming increasingly unstable and if it melted completely, sea levels would rise 6 or 7 meters. Hundreds of millions of people would face coastal flooding because of rising sea levels from melting ice. In this scenario, Ireland will be badly hit. All of Ireland's major populations are based in low-lying areas of the country. Even minor rises, therefore, would cause widespread destruction. If the sea level rose 5 meters, everything east of the Dart Line in Dublin would be underwater. The north inner city of Dublin is extremely low-lying and would become uninhabitable. Nation states acting independently cannot solve this problem alone. International concerted action at EU and global levels will be required. The EU first developed its climate change policy in the 1990s. Despite the EU's lack of formal competences, areas in which the EU is allowed to take action, it has managed to play a leadership role. Internationally, it has provided strong leadership in tackling climate change to the rest of the world. Within the EU itself, the Commission and the European Parliament have encouraged member states to take decisive action through the ambitious legislation they propose and enact. In 1996, the EU decided that a target of 2 degrees would be agreed upon as the maximum acceptable level of global warming. To this date, it is still the only degree-related target in the world. During the 1997 Kyoto Protocol negotiations, the EU played a leading role. It adopted an ambitious target of an 8% reduction on 1990 emissions by 2012. After the Kyoto Protocol was ratified, the EU began to explore how it could go about meeting its targets. It set up the European Climate Change Programme to design new policies and methods to achieve the EU's goals. The emissions trading scheme was the main result of this discussion. What is the emissions trading scheme? Each country is given a certain amount of permits for polluting CO2 in line with its national targets. These allowances are distributed to polluting companies. If an operator pollutes more than its allocation, it has to buy from another company anywhere in the European Union that has reduced its emissions and therefore has permits to spare. This creates a cash incentive for businesses to act on climate change. The first trading period was in the years 2005 to 2007. We are currently within the second trading period. The EU is legislating for the third period when the EU will change its rules completely and take control of allocating permits. Companies will then have to pay for all permits and the overall number of permits each year will be reduced, drawing up the price. Companies will therefore have an even stronger incentive to reduce emissions. How does the current system work? In each area, the Commission makes proposals for new policies and European leaders in the European Council and the European Parliament will make decisions on whether to accept, amend or reject the proposals brought by the Commission. There is a packet of climate change legislation currently under consideration, thought by many to be the most important series of EU laws since Economic and Monetary Union, which gave birth to the Euro in the early 1990s. Number 1. The goal of emission reduction by 20% to 30% by 2020. Number 2. 20% of total energy must come from renewable energy sources. Number 3. Reform of the emissions trading scheme. The trading scheme is also being expanded to include new warming gases into what it terms emissions and other sectors, such as aviation, which are not currently under the scheme. How might the Lisbon Treaty affect this area? 
The main change made by the Lisbon Treaty is the reference for the first time in the EU's rules to combating climate change. Combating climate change is now a specifically stated goal of the European Union. Important measures for climate protection, such as the promotion of renewable energy and energy efficiency, are also set out in the new energy title of the Lisbon Treaty for the first time. Having a clear legal basis in this way is important for long-term policy consistency. It also means that cases could be brought before the European Court of Justice if a goal to reduce climate change or to fight climate change were not being pursued. It also means that cases could be brought before the European Court of Justice where the goal to combat climate change were not being respected. The current direction the EU is taking on climate change is reinforced, clarified and given a sound legal basis under the Lisbon Treaty. Many question the role of the EU now that the continent is at peace, with no great political divides between nations. Climate change is an example of a challenge which must be faced at an international level. EU member states cannot act alone on this. Responding to climate change can be a new narrative for the European Union for the 21st century, just as ensuring peace in the European continent was the narrative for the 20th century.